You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Cheap production, not yeah. this. Uh... 穿梭高速公路，请赐我一块滑板，好简单。你划过打破一切嘅界限，从家乡嘅和谐铁路去到广州嘅街。Open your eyes. Hi, welcome to another episode of Silk and Steel Podcast. Today is August fourth, twenty nineteen, and today we have a very special guest, all the way from Guangzhou, China, Mr. Francis. Welcome to the show, Francis. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's an honor and a privilege.、Um, so let me introduce Francis a little bit because I met him on a Facebook group for Radio Walnut, a friend of the show. Um, and we're all part of the Wall Nerds community. I, I have not never met friends Francis in person、um, before I came to China. I, 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 our interaction was purely online, and <laughs> and you got, look, I got, I got pimp moves. I got pimp moves online, man. Really, my online game is strong. I got you here. You sleeping over? Yes, just from being on the internet. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. You, you, your, your game was was so strong. I, I mean, like,、uh, you, you, you. I think you're famous. I think you're famous because you, you make very <laughs> great posts on the on the Wal,、uh, Radio Walner page or, or the Radio Walner group, Facebook、yeah. group, and 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 you make some <laughs> crazy comments on Twitter as well. So,、um, so thank you.、Oh, yeah. First thing, first of. For thank you for hosting me in Guangzhou.、Um, I stayed a week with. Oh, you won't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I,、uh -huh. I actually, I would never have gone to Guangzhou if it wasn't for the fact that you were there and you invited me over. Because、uh -huh. for some reason, you know, Guangzhou never enter into my mental map. You know, I, 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 I grew up in China for thirteen years, but. I have always traveled kind of along the east-west axis, you know, from my hometown Chongqing、mm -hmm. on the one end of the Yangtze、mm -hmm. River to like the area around Shanghai, my 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 dad's hometown.、Um, so you know, I I have、right. been to finally I've been to Beijing、uh, in 2010 for my little cousin's wedding. That's my first time, you know, going to north. But never so.、Oh. That's the first time. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But but never so far south to Guangzhou, and it didn't even enter my mind that I should go to Guangzhou. Uh, uh, but for your invitation, so so thank you, thank you. I I really love my trip in Guangzhou, and and I find Guangzhou a very lovely city. It's all because of you. But thank you, brother. But why why don't you、um, introduce yourself? Uh, because I、uh -huh. think you can do a better job and more justice than me. Thank you again for having me, Carl.、Uh, so my name is Francis Turpening.、Um, I am an American. I'm originally from the Philadelphia suburbs.、Um, I'm here living in Guangzhou, and it'll be six months tomorrow, Carl, that I have been here. So I'm fresh off the boat.、Uh, I teach English here. Surprise, surprise, right?、Um, at a Montessori kindergarten. Um, which is、uh, very close. I live in the in the northeastern sort of suburb of、uh, Guangzhou called、uh, Luogang. It's in the Huangpu district, but this is a distinct area called Luogang.、Um, it's kind of it's kind of wild area. There's a giant LG factory,、um, and uh, this is this is、uh, an up and coming sort of place here in Guangzhou. But, and there's an urban village right next to you. I mean, you literally live in a mall, right? Like you live in the one dot <laughs> mall. <And laughs> right next to the mall, there's like a freaking village, like a still like a village from a long time, long time ago that was still there. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. The, and it is like、um, Shanggang Village, and it's it's one of the it's a really, really, really big one. There's a few that are in the area still. And they're they're a little bit smaller, and you know they're they're,、um, you know not as not as whatever. But like the Shanggang Village is is insane. I'm looking out the window at it right now, and it's just it is absolutely enormous. And one of the things me and the boys were talking about it yesterday is just like how、um, nuts it is that like you know you go through the village and. You know, it's sort. It's definitely sort of, in some ways, a a a step back in time. You know, probably to the way China was more. You know, like thirty thirty years ago, forty years ago. But 
all you see is storefronts. It's just storefront restaurant, store, store, restaurant, store, restaurant. These these people are, you know, they're out there hustling. It's it's something else. So yeah. Yeah. Before we go on, I like to um reshift the focus back to you. Um so tell us mm-hmm. why China? How, how did you, you know, choose to come to China and, and, you know, how did you find the place? Yeah. So, um, you know, I had finished a bachelor's degree in history, uh, back in like 2012 and I was thinking about doing a PhD. Um, but you know, I, reality kicked in, like I had the grades for it, but like, you know, how much debt do you want to take on? There's no, there's no jobs. There's nothing. You know what I mean? You're a starving artist. So, um, I, you know, I was working at a law firm for a little while and I was, I'd always wanted to travel e- even, um, as a child, I can remember being, you know, like nine years old in the car with my mother and being like, Oh, let's go to, you know, wouldn't it be cool to go to Budapest or Paris? I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to want to do that. I always wanted to see the world. I was always interested in these things. Um, and I, I started reading about, um, uh, teaching English abroad, you know, teaching English to speakers about the languages or, you know, doing the, 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 the expat TEFL route, you know, TEFL would be teaching English as a foreign language. Um, and I decided to, um, get a master's degree in, um, teaching English to speakers of other languages. And the way I did that, I got a job at the university of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, um, and was able to, uh, use the, the benefit that they give to employees to, you know, get that degree without spending an arm and a leg, uh, which is a route I recommend to any listeners who are trying to get uh, a uh, graduate degree, do that. Find a, find a university, get a job there. You don't have to work very hard and uh, you'll get your school paid for. Um, but, um, you know, so I, I got that degree. I have a, a master, a master of science of education in teaching English to speakers of other languages. And I, um, you know, all the jobs are in Asia. The, the, the market for English teaching jobs that, that pay very well are, are in Asia. That's where the demand is very strong. Um, that's where, uh, the, the business is just sort of much more well-established and, and, and more lucrative. Um, so towards the end of my, um, uh, studies, uh, in the d- December of 2017, I, uh, took a three week vacation. I had never been to Asia before and I visited China and I visited three cities in China. I visited, uh, Beijing. Hangzhou. Hangzhou is a, a, a city in uh, Zhejiang province, which is on the east coast of China. It's just south of Shanghai, for listeners that don't know. Um, and uh, I also visited Guangzhou. I have friends that I had made in Philadelphia, in both Beijing and in Guangzhou. So I was, you know, I had connections there. Uh, but I also visited uh, South Korea and I uh, visited Vietnam. And the reason that the reasons there are many many reasons that I I picked China. Um, probably the first uh, one was, um, you know, the the people here are very 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 friendly and very welcoming, much more so than than South Korea. And even though I hadn't been there yet, I would learn and have my prejudice confirmed. Nothing against these wonderful people and they're very nice country. But yes, the Japanese are not quite as friendly <laughs> to foreigners as the uh, the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese are are remarkably um, friendly to to uh, outsiders in, in a way that that is just um, it's uncanny and and. Um, I think that the the only like you hear people talk about the hospitality culture um uh in the Middle East um where um you know if you're welcome in they 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 really spoil you and they really treat you very very nicely I I think China sort of has that I think it, it's it's incredibly welcoming. Okay, so that's uh your reason for choosing China. Tell us a little bit more about your first trip to china that is your first trip to china right well yeah my first trip was in yeah it was in 2017 
um, you know, now, you know, I've, I've been here for the last six months, so I'm still new. I'm still like, you know, it's my second trip, but I'm, I'm a newbie. I'm a total fobber. Um, my first trip, I went to Beijing and I was extremely, extremely fortunate, um, to be, um, in Beijing in December and to have three days of crystal clear blue skies, high pressure, and just really, really good air quality, which you do not get that often in Beijing. Uh, I went to, you know, I've stayed near the Forbidden City and um, like it was, uh, you know, I went there, it was really nice. And there's a park just to the north of the Forbidden City, uh, Jingshan Park, which is actually like, it's a hill that, that is a man-made hill because the first time they built the Forbidden City, it burned down and they like, you know, they, they took all the ashes and all the, all the blocks and they, they piled it and they made a hill out of it. And they have a, they have a large pagoda on the top of the, uh, or a large temple um, on top of the uh, Jingshan Park. And I, I got up there and I mean, dude, I, I swear I could see two bottling and the, the Great Wall. I, I was that fortunate. Visibility was that good. Uh, it was really breathtaking. Um, but uh, Beijing was nice. I have a, I had a, a former roommate of mine uh, um, from Philadelphia. He's a, he's a Chinese man and he is a doctor that lives in Beijing uh, with his family. And he had, he had done um, uh, like, a, like a research uh, internship in Philadelphia. And I, we'd lived together in a boarding house for a little while. And um, he, uh, you know, he, we, we went out, he took me around. We went to the Forbidden City. We went out to the Great Wall. Um, great wall is cool. Uh, it was really funny. Actually, it was really cold when we were there, but like when you're going up and down, like it can, it can be like, you know, quite cold. It can be below freezing, wow. but if the sun is shining and you're walking up and down that thing, you're going to sweat, dude. You work up a really, I was soaked. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, it was really, it's worthwhile. It's definitely go do it. Um, but no, we did all that. And like, um, I was really struck. Beijing was, was a really, it, it was it was very tidy. That was one thing that was uh, really notable, and and um, one of the things that struck me. I remember just like the first night I was there, like you know, I went to bed, I wake up, and I look out the window, and I see people, you know, um, sweeping the streets. You know, uh, uh, public employees sweeping the streets, and I was like, wow, you know, that's uh, you know, that's actually my first impression uh, on my recent trip to China as well in 2019. Um, when I first came back after being away for nine years, my first impression was like, wow, this place is so clean. And and, and it's not just in big cities either. It wasn't yeah. just in, say, like Shanghai or, or Guangzhou or um, actually Guangzhou is one of the more uh, <laughs> gritty places I've been to. <laughs> so and you know it's weird right where i live especially like uh we'll give a little thing about where i live i'm actually like um there's a major major infrastructure project that's happening in guangzhou right where i live where they're linking uh two two lines of the subway and it's right next to a, a an absolutely enormous LG factory that's like the size of an aircraft carrier. You know, has all types of you know. This is LG. It's a Korean company. It has all these kinds of uh, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, geopolitical issues tied to it because you know China wants better relations with South Korea. You know what have you? But especially during the uh, recent uh, trade war with uh, United States. After U.S. is yeah. sanctioning China and limiting Qualcomm, you know, asking Qualcomm to stop supplying chips to China, the other there's not actually not that many uh, manufacturers of semiconductors in the world, other than United States. The other right. two is Taiwan and South Korea. So <laughs> China has every right. incentive to get close to South Korea. Um, especially exactly. n nowadays when now there's a role between Japan and South Korea and Japan is actually trying to slap uh, economic sanctions on South Korea, mostly because, you know, South, South Korean uh, industries are starting to all compete the Japanese. So <laughs> the Japanese are trying exactly. to <laughs> pull the leg up from, from, from under them by limiting high-tech uh, export to South Korea. It's a big uh, 
big thing going on. So yeah, so China has every incentive to get close to South Korea right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the big guy had been here before I got here um, because this. I mean, this is you know this is a big project, but. I don't want to get too much more into that as much as to stay on the subject of grime. So this is a huge construction site right at my apartment building. And then right next door to it is Shangong Village, which we mentioned. And that's really grimy too. So like right where I live is like, oh my God, it's so like, it's just, just, it's, there's always puddles. There's always mud. It's always really like, ah, uh, and like one of the things too is like, you know, I went to Beijing and Beijing was very, very tidy, very, very clean. Beijing is a lot like Washington, D.C. in the sense it has this big squares, uh, big monumental architecture, uh, a lot of open spaces, a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. And, you know, a lot of capital cities are like that. It's, it's not that uncommon, but, um, you know, it, it has that, but it's very tidy. It's very clean. And then I went to Hangzhou after that on my first trip. And of course, Hangzhou, if you've ever been to Hangzhou, if anybody's ever been there, and if you haven't, go there. Hangzhou might be like the prettiest place. Like I've been to Paris, dude. I've been, you know, I haven't been to Florence, but I've been to Paris. I've been to some nice places, man. Hangzhou is beautiful. <laughs> Hangzhou might be the most beautiful place I've ever seen, dude. I really, really uh the, the 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 west lake area and even just the, the i have been to florence and venice and yes i agree with you Hangzhou is beautiful it's it's unreal dude it, it's so so nice it's very green lots of trees but but just everything i mean Zhejiang is very wealthy Zhejiang's the, the wealthiest province in in china but um there's it, it's just a very livable city it's very very pretty and I was, I fell in love. That was when Hangzhou was, was a big allure. I was just like, oh my God, this is awesome. You know? And I kind of got fooled. I was kind of like, oh yeah, all China is going to be like this. <laughs> <You know>? No, <laughs> not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> then I got the law gong and I'm like, oh, but I'm from Philly. So, you know, like grime. So what? Yeah, I'm used to grime, right? <laughs> I'm at home. Right? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so those were the things, you know, I, Vietnam was a really nice country too. Vietnam is, is a, I, I have, you know, I call, call knows the backstory. he lived with me for a week. He heard all about it. I, my ex-wife is from Vietnam. I have a soft spot for Vietnam, but, um, China, China is, is I think better developed and China is, is one of the other big pools here is, Man, it's a go-go place. Things are happening. There, there's, there's just development everywhere. They're just, they're, they're building this thing. So there's, there's money to be made. You know. Speaking of which, because uh, you are talking about the big subway con construction next to your your um, residence, I am really impressed by the Guangzhou subway. The time I was there, I mean, I can literally reach anywhere in the city with the Guang just just a Guangzhou subway and maybe maybe like maybe a bus. I mean most of the time I could just walk. You know, like 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 Guangzhou subway literally take you anywhere in the city and um it's super clean, super nice, uh wild AC. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you talk about it. Yeah, I mean it's 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 it moves fast. They're always on time. You get you you get like I'm not on the I'm not on the most important line, right? You know, I'm on not an insignificant line. Line six is is has its importance, but it's not line three or line one. These are the ones that go right through downtown and go through the through. You're in the boombox. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm out in the sticks, dude. I'm. Really, <laughs> it's crazy. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, you know what's fun? I gotta I gotta interject real quick. You know, I was talking about how like right where I'm at at Wanda is like so grimy and stuff. Uh, a friend of mine at work got an apartment one stop down. It's beautiful. There's, it's really clean over there. And it's like a stop that's further away from downtown. It's even nicer, but I digress. Anyway, um, no, like um, they, they, they come every five minutes, you know. Uh, it runs from like, eh, like 5 a.m. till about like you know, 11 or something like that. Um, they're, they're perfectly, they're, they're immaculate. Like they, there's no, there's no litter. There's no graffiti. 
the 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 trash is changed multiple times a day. They're staffed. That's one of the things that's like uh, we'll get into a lot of the similarities here. But one of the big differences, and this talks this this ties in with the uh, the street sweepers, is uh, they're staffed. They don't try to cut um, uh, payroll all the time here. They they're like you know what it's better let's have people there let's have people checking security and then other like there, there's always just attendants there to clean the the subway stations and also to help you with your ticket and everything like that and they're always well lit everything's on time um I actually got a seat on the subway today which is a little rare they they can be a little crowded but uh it's China there's a lot of people yes. there's, there's a lot of people here I don't know if you've heard but um yeah but they they're really great and uh, yes I mean, but despite the crowd crowdedness in the subway cuz Guangzhou subway is used by a lot of people oh, but they still manage to keep it super clean it's true. and and I have to say I really got spoiled by Guangzhou because uh, you know, from the they have the 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 subway venting machine. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, I it's so super easy. All you have to do is figure out which station you want to go. Mm-hmm. You you press the thing. They will calculate the fare for you, and then um, you know, in most cases, if you if you have a WeChat Chinese WeChat account that's tied to a Chinese bank, uh, you can just scan the the code, and you automatic it's automatic payment. You can pay from your phone. Yeah. Like I was so spoiled in China by like the the cashless payment system that like it was a it was a big shock for me to go to Hong Kong <laughs> like pay for money like the Hong Kong subway required me to put pay for money I was outraged. It's such a pain. I, I'm got I got to go down there next week and it's like oh god I got to bring cash I gotta I gotta get cash I gotta you know and it's like oh good god you know it's so annoying it's so annoying in Hong Kong doing that because I don't even carry a wallet most of the time like I have like a little thing where it's like um. <laughs> Like you have an ID, like as a foreigner, you have like, um, like I have a, a, it's like sort of your work permit ID. It's, it's blue. And like, if a policeman were to, to stop me and I don't have that on me, I'm in trouble. I don't need to keep my passport on me, but I have to keep that on me at all times. And it's like, I have a thing, like a little plastic thing that I stick my, um, my subway card and that, and that's all I carry. I carry that in my phone and my keys. You know, it's, I don't have to worry about it. anybody picking my pocket. I don't have to, you know, you don't have to do anything. And that's the thing. Too. Yeah. And when, when I made the transit to Hong Kong, because I had a seven hour layover at the Hong Kong airport oh. and I, I took the opportunity to see the city. So I was stupidly, I, I left my wallet with my, with my carry on bag, oh. which I left the airport okay it's like i don't need my i don't because in my backpack i also have my laptop i was like oh it's too heavy i'm just gonna check in at the air baggage check right. in at the airport so i can can walk around hong kong so i literally just had my my phone with me uh-huh. and oh my god so I, I, I got on the i got on the airport express on hong kong right you, right. you know taking that train all the way to uh-huh. to hong kong island I got off. That's when I realized, oh, okay, I gotta pay to get out of the station. So no problem. I walk up to the, to the, um, to the, uh, 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 to the, fr- the front desk, fully expecting to pay with WeChat. No, 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 they don't. They don't have WeChat. I'm like what? Oh, no. <laughs> How can you not accept WeChat? Yeah. And then, and then I was like, oh my god, I don't have money. What do I do? So uh, thankfully, my I had um, Apple. Uh, I had a credit card linked with uh, my yeah. with my iPhone, like Apple. Pay. So they did accept Apple Pay. Yeah, that, that's how I was able to get out of the train station in Hong Kong. It was ridiculous. And that's that's you know it's funny, dude. It's like that thing. The the convenience of WeChat is you know one thing I want to say. Like another pool, something like that. Where where first impressions and why did I decide to go to China is. There are, and one of my first impressions that happened in Beijing, um, and in in that trip was, in some ways, China is ahead of the United States on certain just weird small things, just just little things like that. You could say WeChat, but also like I took a um, 
I took a fat, I took a, a high speed rail train from Beijing to Hangzhou. And that distance is, is, I, you know, everything for me will be from Philadelphia. Everything will be because, you know, fuck you. <laughs> That's fine. But anyway, yeah. So like, uh, it's the same distance as like Philadelphia to Orlando. Right. And uh, the train ride was four hours, four and a half hours. Right. Um, like, that's like pretty much a flight for, you know, maybe an hour more than like a flight from Philadelphia to Orlando. And like, it was the equivalent. And I, I rode first class and it was like, um, I think the equivalent of about um, 50 US dollars or something like that, or maybe, maybe a hundred. But wow. that's not bad. And it, can you imagine what an Amtrak would cost? And it would be like, it would take you like three days or something later. It'd take you like two days to get <laughs> Philadelphia to Orlando. You know, and it, was, yeah. and it was, you know, they have stewardesses that come up and give you like, you know, like little meals and like, you know, chocolates and crap like that. And it's tons of leg room. It was a really, really, you know, the, the infrastructure, these were, these were some of the pools. These were some of the things that was like, you know, this is a good place. This is a place where, where things are happening and where like the country is has things together it has itself together and is is doing the right things and it's like it makes it a place where i want to live you know so that was a big thing and like it, it's so weird the wechat thing is like it takes you a month where you're just so used to it takes you just a month to adjust to that that convenience where you expect it you know and, and, and when you don't have it like i remember the first time i went to hong kong back in like i think it was march and it was, I'm like, what do you mean? You don't take WeChat? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, what am I? And, and yeah, you know, I had the same. Oh my God, how am I going to pay? You know? You know, because like you're used to it. Yeah, it was an outrage because like now, now I'm in Bali, right? Indonesia. Like there's a, mm -hmm. there, there's like literally grocery store, like, like not that far from me. Even they freaking take WeChat, you know, and the Ali <laughs> I know, I know, it's nuts, it's nuts, but, um, yeah, yeah, but that's, you know, these were all, these were all things, you know, and I got to, I got to, you know, like, on that first trip, you know, I, 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 my eyes were wide, you know, and it was all, oh, you know, I was, I was, I was seeing all the, all the good, and, you know, now I'm here, and it's, you, you know, there, there's a real side to it, too, you know what I mean, like, I, I, yeah, let's tell us about that because you oh, yeah. I have a very different experience. Uh, because, yeah. like, we had a like, long term China resident, David Milley, on the show before, um, another mm -hmm. fellow uh, Wall nerd uh, from the Wall nerd community. But he's um, more like a China head now because he, he yeah. lived in China for several years. He's, he's embedded right. in the local community. Whereas you, yeah. you know, as fresh off the boat as you are, like let's let's hear about your experience, like how you adjust to the new life in China, right? Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, it it took a little while. It took uh, it took a uh, you know, my my attitude coming in was good. I I was like, look, you know, China's not going to change. Um, if I if I could give a shout out, but not really to ADV China, like their old videos from like four or five, three, four or five years ago, where it was like how to get an apartment in China and, you know, what you should expect from Chinese culture. Like they were very useful. They were like, look, you know, China is going to be difficult. They're not going to conform to you. You're going to have to have, if you want to succeed in China, you have to have an attitude of, of trying. You got to try to do it their way as much as possible because it's their country, right? You know? That's what they used to be about. Now those guys are just all oh, China's bad, man, trade war. <laughs> they're just like they're. I, I guess they're going for clicks, or I don't know. They're just weird. I don't know what the hell their problem is. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. I, I mean, like yeah. ADV China. That back in the few back in the days, they were actually giving practical, useful information yeah. well, about China, how yeah. how China is. You know, like I mean, that, that's why that's why we're on this show. I I got you come to talk about it. You know, like because now right. I'm gonna run those guys out. I'm gonna be the new guy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. So so now I I have you. You know, fresh off the boat from America, coming to live in China in 2019. Uh -huh. 
You know, what, 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 um, how did China, you know, match your expectation? Where, where did, you know, China, like, you know, you find something different, like that, that was unexpected, you know, like, like, tell us everything, all the goods and the bad, you know, the goods. Everything. We touched on this earlier, but I really want to hit it hard with, um, the, the thing that's most amazing about China and what, like, you know, I, I'll, I'll get into, I had a very difficult period um, for um, about two months here where I really went through a bit of a culture shock and I, I kind of, I was unhappy at my job and I was really thinking about leaving. And one of the things that really kept me back is like, I went to Japan for, for like a, a week during a holiday. I was like, well, it was really nice here. But um, the, the, the culture and the people, the friendliness of the people is really just unmatched in the sense that like, um, they are so welcoming. Like you, you walk down the street and um, they want you to join them to, to smoke a cigarette with them, to, to drink, uh, to drink a beer, to, to be their friend. They want you to be like them. And, um, you know, I, coming here, obviously, as a, as a foreigner and being someone outside of this culture you know, I don't know the etiquette. I don't know um, uh, uh, all the P's and Q's here. So I'm making faux pas. Like when I go out to dinner with Chinese friends or, or, or you know, hang out with them, play badminton or whatever, um, you know, I, I, will, I will do things that are uncouth and that are, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, impolite, completely unintentionally and not knowing it the Chinese will never call you out for it. They, they will never say, oh, you did bad. You'll never get shamed for it. Um, what they will do is they will hold your hand and, and sort of help you to do it their way. Like, you know, just little things. And it's, it's you know, this is an old and very developed culture. And Guangdong is, is especially traditional. Um, just little things like how to wash your they use tea to wash their their chopsticks and their bowls and their their spoons and all their utensils um before they eat anything so they show you how to do that and you know if you're pouring tea for others when you put the tea back there's the the, the pot back it, it should point a certain way and everything they hold your hands through these little things you know um and that is like it's so endearing and, and it, 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 it really made me feel loyal to them in a way that like, you know, when I was thinking about like, I'm like, Oh, maybe I could get a job in Japan. I have a degree. I could, you know, I can get a job anywhere, you know? And it was like, I would feel like I'm betraying these people. <laughs> people have been so kind to me. I can't turn my back on them. You know, um, it, it's, it's, it's really, that's, that's something that's very strong and that, that really hits you in the heart. Um, you know, that's really, really one of the goods. Um, some of the other things that are, that are good, you know, I mentioned like, you know, that there's the infrastructure, there's this, there's that, the other thing. Um, the food is incredible here. The food is so good. It's, it's cheap and, and there's just so much of it. There's so much variety. Um, and it's just like, it's so good. Dude, I, I know because I literally put on 15 <laughs> kilos after. It's so good. I'm finally, finally slowly, slowly making it disappear in Bali now. Like after yeah. a month in Bali, like working <laughs> every day. <laughs> My China Valley finally disappearing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's good. Well, hey, man, you got what you said earlier about the hospitality, and and I think that's very important for uh, for any newcomer to right. China. Right. Uh, don't worry about making a cultural mm. full pot, right? Because people will understand you are a foreigner. You don't understand the local etiquette. Yeah. So um, I think that you know they will make they will make allowance for you, and, yeah. and, and as you point out, that you show you the way i mean i think the golden rule is don't be a jackass yeah. right <laughs> just don't be a jackass and be respectful of the locals you'll be fine yeah you will be okay yeah yeah i mean if i can if i can talk. But how was your chinese when you first came to china yeah. well you know on the first trip like i said on the first trip i had um 
I was I was still in my master's program, and the semester um, I came in December of 2017, and that was the end of uh, a semester. And during that semester, I took an elective in Intro to Mandarin, and I'm a good student, you know. I, I try pretty hard, and um, you know, I did um, okay. Uh, I think my reading, it's weird. My speaking is better now, but but I really have not kept up with my reading or writing practice. But um, I was able to read a lot and I could speak a little bit. And of course, I mean, this is universal. Anywhere you go, if you try to speak the language, everybody's impressed and everybody gives you kudos. But um, one of the things that that I was able to do when I first got here on that first trip was I was able to read, like I was at a banquet um, at a university and the, the students had put some stuff, some decorations up on the wall saying we are family and everything. And I was able to read it and there are, they were all, you know, touched. They're all, oh, they, you know, they get, they made a big fuss over me being able to read out loud the Chinese characters that they had had on the wall. Oh, yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they were all, yeah, they were all over there squeezing my cheeks and, you know, you know, I was the door, I was an adorable little partner for that. Right. You know, <laughs> um, you know, uh, anytime I do that, they always make a Ekong. Well, Ekong's known me for like four years. He still makes a fuss anytime I do anything Chinese. Um, but like, um, now, now it's getting, I mean, it's getting better. Like, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is like, um, uh, when, you know, and when I first landed, it was like, I knew some, I knew, I knew a little bit of basic, you know, like I said, I had a semester and I, there was a lot of programs. There's, there's a lot of stuff like just Duolingo and stuff like that. Where like, you know, are you going to become fluent? No, but you know, I had a little basic understanding of some words, you know what I mean? And if you force yourself out there and make it happen where like, you know, you, you actually get out there and interact with Chinese people and put yourself in situations where you, you force yourself to use Chinese, you're going to learn Chinese. And, and my Chinese is still lacking. I, you know, I have a lot to learn and I want to do, do more practice with it and all that kind of stuff. But, um, I, I, I get along a lot better. And it's like, I start saying things like, like, oh, you know, like all this kind of like little mannerisms really, really kind of creep in and they'll creep in really, really quickly, you know? So a significant other will help. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. I, I, I have heard, I have heard uh, that the best way to learn a language is in bed. I have heard. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But um, no, but even then, like there, this is another thing. This is a testament to, to, to the Chinese on that is not only will they make a fuss, like if you try, they're going to help you, you know? And like, you know, I don't speak the language very well and, and it's more difficult to, to learn because the writing system is not phonetic. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a character based writing system. Um, so it's harder to learn how to read, which makes it harder to learn. Um, you, even with that, I, I really don't think I've been ripped off more than maybe once. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, they, they really, like, that's a thing. Like you would think like, you know, because of that, you know, you're new, you don't speak the language, you're a mark, you know, and I haven't really been taking the cleaners, you know, they, they, they don't do that. That's not the, that's, uh, it's not the way. You know, so. Well, I, I'm I'm glad you're thriving, my man. And uh, so, how how do you how do you like? Um, is it, you you you've been you've been in China for six months now, right? You know, any any kind of thoughts? You, any any observ yeah. observations you have? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Ch well, this is the thing. You know, I've 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 you know I said this to you a million times while you were here. Um, China, like I, I've been to, you know, I've been to Western Europe, I've been to Mexico, I, I've been to um, South Korea, Japan, been to Vietnam. Um, China feels more like the United States uh, than any other country I've ever been in, you know, and it's like, obviously, you know, the United States, it, it's culturally much closer to these, to the European um, uh, our countries, but China is eerily in, in ways that are like good, bad, and just strangely 
much more like the United States than any of those other places. And it's, it's really weird. Can you explain? Yeah. Um, and one thing like to start with, we have, you know, the geography, these are both just huge countries and, and China and the United States are really oddly mirror each other. The only thing that, that, uh, the United States has that China doesn't would be California. Um, because the United States, like the East coast of the United States, uh, has the same, uh, climate as the East coast of, of, uh, China. You know, you go up to Beijing and Dongbei, that's, you know, that's new England and, you know, uh, uh, up around through the young, uh, up to the Yangtze, that's like, you know, uh, your mid Atlantic and, um, South of Yangtze is the South Guangdong's Florida, uh, the the western parts of China, Xinjiang and Tibet, they're um, an arid um, sort of inner mount- and mountainous area, just like the inner mountain west of the United States. Uh, at, they're roughly the same size and everything. You know, it's it's uh it's it's that's just you know that's more of a random thing, but uh, it kind of seeps in too because these countries are both so so huge. There, there's sort of a cultural um, uh, effect of their size. Um, you know, the, the, in the United States, um, yeah, there's the, there's that old mannerism and I know you're going to correct me on this, but, uh, you know, in Europe they say, uh, a hundred year or excuse me, a hundred miles is, uh, a long distance. And in, uh, America, uh, we think a hundred years is a long time, you know, um, you know, in China, um, you know, there's like distance, like they, they seem like a hundred miles isn't a long distance, just like a hundred miles isn't a long distance in, in, um, in the United States. Like, like people will travel farther, um, you know, either on a long distance thing, like, you know, going from, let's just say like, you know, doing day trips from, uh, Guangzhou to Shenzhen, um, which is roughly the same distance of, Philadelphia and New York city or something like that, or, um, you know, just even within town, like people will go across town in, in Guangzhou, or even they'll walk distances that are longer that someone from, um, like a guy I work with from Taiwan, he won't walk that same distance. He would think like, Oh, three kilometers. That's far away. You know, where it's like three kilometers is like, well, that's, that's really <laughs> close. You know what I mean? It's, it's, okay, I, I'm going to I'm gonna add a corrective here. So back when I was growing up <laughs> in 1980s China, 100 miles did seem a long distance. Right. Uh, it's just because that's just a factor of transportation right. back then, you know, because like back then it was by bus yeah. or by train and, and, and 100 miles just takes forever. And for you, you know, it seems so convenient and easy to hop on a train to get from Guangzhou to Shenzhen in no time at all. It's because now it's 2019 and you have this right. wonderful Chinese high-speed rail <laughs> system <laughs> that, will, that will, you know, connect yeah. you to no time at all. And, and not even just high-speed rail, I must say, because I also took the slow train to travel China from Yun, from Kunming, the capital mm-hmm. of uh, Yunnan province, all the way on the southwestern border to, uh, you know, to Shanghai, which yeah. covers almost like the entire distance mm-hmm. of China, across the entire, uh, you know, southern mm-hmm. China. Um, and even the, even the, um, mm-hmm. the so-called slow trains, um, you know, it's, it seems like no, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's travel is really super easy. I, uh, I got a sleeper train because I know, mm-hmm. you know, it, it takes longer, but, yeah. uh, this, there's two types of sleeper train. There's a hard sleepers mm-hmm. and the soft sleeper. Uh, it just, in terms of privacy and number of beds in, in, in hard sleepers, you get like, uh, three bunk beds right on top of each other. And sometimes it's not fully closed. Uh, where a soft mm-hmm. sleeper, there's a door you can close, you get mm-hmm. a completely closed compartment and it's only two bunk, you know, like two bunk beds in, in a, in a compartment is a lot more comfortable, but like, like you mentioned earlier, the price is yeah. super cheap, you know, for 50 us dollars, right. I travel oh. halfway across China on a bed, you know, like, so, so it's, yeah, 
No, sure. Those sleepers are really popular. People love them. Like it, it's it, people do this all the time. People do like around New Year's. Like you, you hear like my ex girlfriend. Um, like she had she went from Gansu to Guang, to Shenzhen on like it was like a thirty two hour trip. She's, I'm like, how did you do it? She's like, oh, I didn't sleep her. You know, it's, it's not hard. It's easy. You know. I'm well rested. It wasn't the end of the world, you know. Yeah, you were literally laying down your bed and reading a book or, or playing with your phone. Yeah, you were playing with your phone, and they have internet with it most of the time, anyway. So yeah, so there's that, and it's it you know the size really does though I think make these cultures similar in the in the sense that you know America is so big that you know you have this American exceptionalism. You know, it, it, this sort of parochial attitude where America doesn't look outside as much, you know, it, which is, it's weird, you know, because America, <laughs> you know, we say that like, you know, America, American foreign policy obviously has its tentacles everywhere, but the American people, your average American, they're not really that concerned with, you know, um, people that don't play baseball, you know what I mean? Like, Probably because we can't find them on that. Um. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, when I was at when I was at Penn, you know, um I had a girlfriend who who was Chinese and and um you know from China and she, you know, uh was in a master's program, right? And um, you know, she she grad she's she was you know, the she's very wealthy. You have to be very wealthy to get to study abroad, especially at a place like the University of Pennsylvania, right? Um, we were talking about my ex, and like she had never heard of Vietnam wow. <laughs> before. Um, and then my ex -wife was in there, so I mean, it's just the thing, and it's like you know, China ruled Vietnam for a thousand years, for God's sake, you know, you, you don't know, and it's it doesn't matter, you know, like why why would you care? Obviously, and this is an educated woman, you know from upper echelons of society that, you know, just didn't really, wasn't really interested in, in small countries that are outside of China, you know, and that's, that's an attitude that is very familiar to Americans. That's something that's very, very common in the United States. And I think that, that you see that here in China, um, to a certain you extent. Are, you are onto something here. I mean, we often talk about American exceptional, exceptionalism. Uh, I think there's definitely the equivalent Chinese exceptionalism <laughs> in China. And uh, I think you call it out on the head, you know, parochial is a word <laughs> that can be accurately <laughs> described people in both places. <laughs> uh, any other any other similarity and differences? I mean, there's a ton. There, there's 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 um, one of the things that is is really 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 interesting is um, you know both the United States and China like um, all the construction you know um, and and all the infrastructure and all those things. I I feel that you know I, I'm going to quote. You know, a really uh, schlocky and 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 and, uh, and cliche movie here, but uh, in Feel the Dreams, <laughs> uh, uh, James Earl Jones at one point he's going on in some on a monologue and he talks about America um, uh, tearing itself down and building itself up the way it always does, and um, you know, America does that. America, like you know, America has gotten in recent years is there's more historical preservation, but um, uh, historically speaking, uh, America, um, when things are developing, when we have, um, prosperity, uh, you know, they knock down old shit and they put up new shit, you know, they like to do it a lot, you know, and it's like, um, you know, we may say that America doesn't spend enough on infrastructure and spend more, I would agree, but, and it certainly doesn't spend nearly what China does. And China is doing well with its infrastructure. It's, it's, it's a good program here. America should do that. But, when when things are good in America, I mean, you look at the history of like urban renewal and stuff like that. Like America's constantly knocking down old stuff and building new stuff. Either building up roads or you know this that pay paradise, put up a parking lot. You know, um, China does that big time. China is just it's this place is just one big construction site. There, there's constantly um, just building either uh, houses roads 
railroads, subways, whatever. And, um, you know, like they, they knock down a lot of like a lot of older buildings, a lot of things, a lot of there, there's, there's not a whole lot of thought put into maintenance and preservation. There's more put into like, Oh, it's old. It's, it's not good anymore. Knock it down, you know? And, and to be fair, like, when you're talking about like some of the villages, like they were kind of just thrown up kind of quick and the government, you know, like no one really would want to live there. So like, you know, the government just buys it from the, uh, from the people that live in the villages and they just knock them down and put up big apartment buildings. Um, so you have that. There's that definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you literally live in a construction site, dude. <laughs> I'm scared, but, but to be honest, like you know, you, you you take a train. Like I remember taking the train from from Beijing to Guangzhou, and like we we're going through through uh, Jiangnan. You know, we're going through like um, you'll go past like uh, like uh, um, Nanjing, and you go through like Shuzhou and all this stuff. And there's and in, just even around um, what's it called again? And around Beijing, just. New high rises going up all the time. It's just cranes. Just, just it's constantly. They're constantly building. So yeah, but um, yeah, you have that. The other big thing I would say too is China has this. You know, like if you want to contrast China um, to to some of its neighbors, you know, if you want to contrast China, like let's say like Japan. Uh, I think that the relationship with China and Japan is is, is in some ways oddly a little bit like the United States and Europe in the sense that, um, you know, the United States has, has, has more of a cultural populism, right? Not an economic populism, not even whatever, you know, and it's obviously Mark Ames will tell you populism is a very terrible term that's been abused and what have you, but regardless, um, <laughs> nonetheless, like, you know, there, there's, there's in, in the United States, massive deference um is paid to um the oaf you know uh we uh you know, the, 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 <laughs> explain the term of oaf <laughs> you know oaf, oaf is a hot term right now it's 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 really it's in the lexicon it's in the zeitgeist but um yeah it's sort of sort of you know you're 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 less well educated um uh you know lower let's say economically challenged, um, uh, salt of the earth kind of guy, right? Your average Joe, Joe six pack, right? You hear these, you know, these goddamn politicians in the United States are constantly talking about these people and lionizing them, you know? And I mean, that goes back all the way to like, they've been doing that since Bacon's rebellion ended essentially, right? In the United States. Um, you know, there, 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 there's a, a, a massive, um, cultural power that these people have in the United States and in China, they kind of have it too, you know, like, you know, all the dudes that have got their, their bare midriffs showing, you know, uh, you know <laughs> like, like the, the dudes that just like, you know, smoke wherever the hell they want. Like, Oh God, they're Carl, there's a guy smoking in the elevator the other day, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you're, you're not allowed to smoke there. Like, they, they do have signs. It's like, you know, no smoking. These dudes, they just do not give a shit. They just go. They do whatever. You know, they, they, they drive, you know, the gas-powered um, motorcycles on sidewalks. Um, and this is around here. They don't do this downtown, but, you know. Um, the, the, the oaf in, in China, you know, the, the common man – has a little bit of of deference paid to him as well, you know, in a way that in Japan, you know, it, the suits matter, dude. You know, they got the salary man and the 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 the, the people higher up in the echelons. You know, it's sort of like Europe, where you know, you know, the 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 you know, be the the more well-educated parts of the bourgeoisie or, you know, even going back, you might even say like, you know, maybe the nobility or whatever, you know, there, there's that more hierarchical, um, uh, 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 culture and, and, uh, respect is still paid to the hierarchy in, I think, Western Europe and, and in, um, and in, uh, uh, Japan as well. But here, like, 
Um, you're talking about the classes, yeah, right? You're, yeah. you're talking about the kind of yeah. the, the social classes. Okay, you know, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. China, I, I, obviously, I, yeah. in China, just like the United States, you know, the the the, the very wealthy do very well and, and actually run the show, right? But um, and 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 are outpacing these people at a very rapid rate and are enjoying a a a you know more powerful and more sort of successful life but just on the but they have to pay lip service to the common man nah. they have to even Donald Trump who was born with a silver spoon yeah. have to pretend that he was a man of the people right right and it has to be done here too you know it's the thing if you you know they have their little anti-smoking campaigns but if they really went hard at it it wouldn't work they get mad they get real 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 mad you know like you you have to pay deference to you know your local oaf here in the way that that you do in the united states so um which uh, you know has its goods and its bad is oath a politically correct term? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Definitely. As 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 a as as a yeah, I'm an oaf myself. You know, in a in a you know, I I'm an upwardly mobile oaf. You know, I would put it that way. You know, like I, but but that's that's where I come from. That, that's my people. You know, in America. You know, we're we're German Americans, so you know. Definitely very open, but um, yeah, yeah, they're there. But um, and it's funny though too. It's it's weird. There's there's as a result there's sort of a an an odd you know and and don't think of this in the political spectrum uh, 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 terms, but there's a there's a, there's this really strong conservatism of not changing things right like like things that are sort of like yes. things that are like obvious problems that drive everyone crazy right like they're like yeah we can't change anything like like in america there's tons of things like you know some what i guess it was uh i don't know if you heard the news but like i guess yesterday in america or today and whatever it is uh like 20 people got blown away you know uh in like el paso or something like oh the el paso shooting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like you know but it's like uh, can we you know can we do anything about now? Nah, we can't do anything. about. <laughs> we can't change anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, and it's like here, it's all like- oh, right. Because a second, a wall form militia, you know, that's so important in 2019. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah this is, this is, this are our ancient values. These are our ancient, you know, we, you know, in America, that's what we say. These are, these are our, our fundamental values and we can't ever change it. You know, with China, there's nobody getting blown away. Right. Um, but, and this is, this is, this is my, this is just my own pet peeve that I'm totally projecting on here, but I got to say it like, you know, you see this in, in, in Chinese, I see this in cuisine, right. With China, right. Like I like fish, but I, I live in holy terror of fish bones. Right. And they just, they will not. Now there is of course, Sichuan river fish, which is filleted, which is delicious and you can get, but um, that's like the only filleted fish that they have here. And they don't fillet pretty much anything else. Like if you get chicken, you get duck. Uh, I mean, like you can buy a, a chicken or duck breast at like the supermarket and it'll be really cheap because the Chinese don't want it. They actually want the stuff with the bones. Right. Um, but if like you get like, um, either fowl or you get anything, you're liable to get, um, bones, right in your food right you're going to have a lot of bones and you kind of got to chew around the bone right um because you're using chopsticks you're not using um forks and knives right so like you know that's one thing when you're doing like spare ribs like that's easy you know who cares you know you can just spit the spit the bone out that's not a problem but i get a little touchy when i when i'm eating fish like that you know cuz like i'm i'm either scared of swallowing the fish bone, I have an irrational fear of choking to death on that. Can totally relate because, you know, I was spent about two months at my dad's hometown, Zhejiang, right? Like in uh, just south of Shanghai. Right. And fish is a major part of the diet, right? And and the, the way they do fish, I love it. they don't, <laughs> they don't, because it's like river fish and they don't fillet it. They, it's like, they just, it's a whole fish with all the small, 
bones yeah. in it, everything. Like I was super careful, right? Every time I was super careful. I like you really use my tongue in there, like you really feeling that small bone. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I still got yeah. choked like three times, right? Like like I have fish bone was stuck on my throat and I and like once a couple of times I was in a restaurant so I had to like with my dad and, and, and his, his school buddy so I have to like pretend to be calm and and, and waiter uh, uh, vinegar vinegar please and then, because vinegar <laughs> yeah, exactly because vinegar softens the, the, the fish bone and and, and, and and melts it and make it go oh. down right and like like I don't know what happened that day like the the, the give me like a super weak ass vinegar <laughs> I, I swallowed a whole bowl and like it didn't it didn't now I had to ask for a second one and 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 this happened to me like three times you know like like um during my stay in China and the time the whole time I was eating these fish I was thinking oh man. These 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 things will kill the Westerners, <laughs> you know. Like the Westerners will die <laughs> eating this. There's no way they, they know how to eat this stuff. Uh, I, anytime I go out to eat with the Chinese, and it's like I'm like, oh god, you know, I don't want to be rude, but it's like, oh, and it's like even with like if you don't like sw- choke on it, swallowing it, like. Those things are razor sharp too. Like they like hurt. You know what I mean? Like even if you catch it, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're using your tongue or whatever, you're like lacerate yourself with them. And it's like this speaks to like the like conservatism of it of of like uh, you know now we have a four thousand year old culture. We can't fillet. No, no, no. Just chew around the bone. Just just chew around the fish bone. Okay, you'll be fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Our culture is very refined. You can't do that. We can't change it. You're crazy. You're not going to change it, right? You know? And of course, they adopted smoking, like, what, like 50, 60 years ago? And they can't get rid of that either, right? You know? <laughs> it's just part of their masculinity. So, you know, you can't get rid of that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, yeah. But, but that's yeah. the thing. And there's like, I forget them now. I mean, God, when you were here, I think I had like a, a list that was like a million long lines longer of how they're just the same you know how america you know it's fine dude we, we you can always come back and talk about it when you remember <laughs> you know i mean like it, it, it's just fun to talk to you because you know you you I, I don't know what it is man i mean you you <laughs> you you just have this vivid description of things um yeah, and uh, so we we already gone on for an hour, and uh, this was this this was great conversation. Uh, you know, this is the first time uh, you're guesting on my show, and and again, I must thank you for hosting me, in Guangzhou. Carl, you you took my you took my podcast, uh, Cherry Dude. <laughs> yes, I'm, yes. I'm gonna tell my grandchildren about you, man. I'm never gonna forget you. You know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, so thank you again, uh, Mr. Francis, for coming to the show, and uh, hopefully we'll do this again. Yeah, thank you so much, Carl. It, it was blast, dude. Yeah, yeah. Hope to see you soon, man. Definitely. Okay, everybody. That was Francis. Um, uh, a fellow Walnerd and uh, a, a recent uh, American patriot uh, expat in China. Uh, thank you for listening. Until next time. Bye bye. Chong 
海茫茫，亦会将到浪浪乾坤。凡事皆有尺度，都不能自由放任。我对力尺个遮天已经化作还行。你不问佢不敢信，有牺牲都无定过问。有几多壮志未酬嘅英雄再次隐恨？有几多壮士未能跨过呢条裂痕？有几多权将一朝一夕未能变成铁棍具备精气神力魂？一人将辛苦重游，苦旅重重嘅人最终会两手空空，精气神人齐齐，气势来势空空。用干劲自力死与，没法到发发发足。一眨发功，各道英雄好比水与争锋。苦旅重重嘅人最终会两手空空，精气神人齐齐，气势来势空空。用干劲自力死与，没法到发发发足。一眨发功，各道英雄好比水与争锋。地利系谁？是没谁变，谁能睇过最变满挂的 words 吗？碰起双手，双手开始腐化，界定黑板，先穿上嘅黑鞋，精气神嘅眼啊。Smart or master， 打城市嘅小故事，有大事故照事故知，知道迟早必定知。多斗士 ，bad fuck， 我苦食嘅城市太过化，何必撕票到定位 ？Watch， 打在乱嘅垃圾，未知嘅病毒源头。Watch， 我潜伏喺你四周，我反复规则不会再揭露，最如猫最胡闹嘅主流，只会令你下作唔会放，人间烟火。Fuck， 唔系我嘅胃口，迷藏系我全身城市心灵。Got the animal， 念物我哋念晒生物，念物嘢会喺最高嘅 city。The bitch is a cash cow crib， 精气神晒过 H K。O C M A， 苦旅重重嘅人最终会两手空空，精气神人齐齐，气势来势空空，用干劲自力死与，没法到发发发足，一打发功，各道英雄好比谁与争锋。苦旅重重嘅人最终会两手空空，精气神人齐齐，气势来势空空，用干劲自力死与，没法到发发发足，一打发功，各道英雄好比谁与争锋。